is one that Mike wrote. This is called Along the Way. All right, let's hear And I just want to throw this out there. We haven't played this live since, like, 2013, and I don't think I've ever sung it live. So, I guess we're in for a wild ride. Special event. Yes. Okay. Auburn Row. What what was the name of that song? That was Along the Way. Awesome. I like it. Thanks. So, tell us a bit about the band. All right. Uh, So, we started back in 2012, um, and it was kind of, you know, this mesh of people from a bunch of mutual friendships. I've known Mike for about, what, nine, ten years, something like that. (laughs) Um, And then we, you know, eventually wanted to start a a band for real we had like five or six failed attempts with that you know formation um and then i knew andrew from xavier high school where we both went to high school um and i the reason he came to mind was because i had walked into the band room a couple times just uh for jazz rehearsal or whatever and he'd just be wailing this rock beat 
that was just crazy energetic, and I was like, I want to play with this guy. And uh, sure enough, he turns out he's a great guy too, and a great addition to the band. And he knew Jared, who we brought on on guitar and vocals as well. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of how the band came to be. And I've been going about four years. Awesome, and all your music is on Bandcamp? Yeah, our debut record, The World Outside, came out a year ago today, which we didn't plan. Um, <laughs> and I think uh, the Titanic actually sunk on this day all Did those really? years ago. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> all right. It's an anniversary for a lot of things. R.I.P. Leo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yes, The World Outside. <laughs> Um, the World Outside, it's on Bandcamp, iTunes, Spotify, um, Amazon MP3, basically all digital retailers. We have physical copies at shows as well, so uh, yeah, go check it out. So what do you think about The World Outside? Um, it's a bit cold. Do you, Well, yes, do you want me to give you a full rundown on this? <laughs> oh, no, I was just, I was just being I, funny. There's <laughs> a whole question. thing there. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, okay. Well. Today, today was a... Nice day out. It was a little cold, but it's getting better. <laughs> That's what our album is about. Here on the about. Westfield Weather News. <laughs> it's definitely warmer in Philly. I will say that because I was there earlier. It's always <laughs> sunny. It's always sunny there too. Mm, yeah. If only that were true. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. Um, they have a lot of rum hams too. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> and cheese steaks. Oh yes. <laughs> so many cheese steaks. <laughs> Does your album have a central theme or message? Ah, well, okay. Yeah, let, let's go down the rabbit hole here. Um, <laughs> um, a lot of the record I, was kind of written probably half by solely me. Um, but that was, you know, obviously the guys brought their own little parts to it and made, it, made them infinitely better songs. But the general foundation was from uh, a couple years back when I went through a pretty bad breakup. So a lot of the songs are kind of central focuses on that. That's definitely something that I'm happy to report is not something I ever want to write lyrics about again. Okay. So, um, but that was definitely a central theme. Um, another theme I would say is just discontentment with society and people uh, being afraid of individuality, um, which is something that stuck out to us. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's uh, about as central of a theme. Yeah. As it is. Definitely rad. I got a I got a few questions if you guys are down. Yeah. Um, who do you use for uh, your album art? Do you have like oh. friends who like create the album art for you? Uh, the album art was done uh, kind of between me and our drummer Andrew. Uh, he took uh, like a really cool picture of this old house or something, um, and I. You know, did some Photoshop magic on it to kind of give it a kind of darker, creepier vibe, uh, and we kind of did that with a, you know, most of the album art. So we just, you know, did it all ourselves. That's cool. Yeah. I had no part in it. <laughs> Absolutely no part. <laughs> no. So no. well, you you gave the thumbs up, so that was. Cool. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you guys killed it. <laughs> so uh, I got a few more questions. Um, what emotions do you think you're trying to invoke in your listeners? Positive, sad, negative? I, I guess generally thought-provoking. Um, I know with a lot of our current material that we have released, it's kind of more uh, <laughs> contemplative and uh, almost depressing <laughs> in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and something that we're really trying to work toward, and a couple songs on The World Outside kind of focus on this, is just kind of more broad themes that apply to our lives in various ways. Um, so, like, the song I'm Not Like You is, is a song all about being true to yourself and being an individuality, uh, being an individual in a society where, you know, people are kind of afraid to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so stuff like that is definitely um, kind of, that's what we want to draw from the listeners. We want them to start thinking about these things as well. Cool. Yeah. So you guys are trying to, you know, evoke some philosophical discussion within the minds of your listeners there. Yeah, in a way. Um, you know, we're no Socrates or any of those. I probably... Is he even a philosopher? He is, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I have a college degree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking back to the classic Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. So great. <laughs> so great. <laughs> <laughs> so great. <laughs> oh, Napoleon. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That movie was great. It was excellent. Oh, I love that movie. Uh, oh, since we're on this like topic about movies, all right. What are you guys' favorite movies of all time? <sighs> Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't. Prepared I wasn't for prepared. This. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go first because Mike is. Y- you know more about movies than I do. That's just a but fact. But to pick favorites, yeah. Ooh. Well, I can't pick a favorite. I'll tell you right now, um, because I, I don't watch movies that often, but I will say that I generally really like comedies and action films. Um, I love The Avengers, and I know everyone loves The Avengers, but I too love The Avengers. I also love The Avengers. I, the think, Avengers it's, I think it's fantastic. I haven't seen any of the DC ones yet, though. So I saw The Avengers three times when it came out oh, in the theaters. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so good. Are you guys excited for Civil War then? Yeah. It's oh, be yes. pretty sweet. <laughs> Matt's Bring like, it. I don't like Captain America. I don't like <laughs> Captain America, but I feel like Civil War is just The Avengers. Yeah, part it three. Does, it does seem much. that way. Yeah. yeah. 2.5, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More or less. Are you guys big superhero movie guys? I mean, I am. I don't. Mike has other... Uh... Yeah, I definitely. Uh, the Avengers was awesome. Um, um, I really like the the way Marvel is going with their movies with the uh, Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's really cool, and I'm definitely enjoying them. Uh, I haven't seen any of like the recent DC movies, so I haven't seen like Batman versus Superman or anything like dude, that. Dude, don't even waste your money. That's what I've heard. <laughs> that's what I've heard. Um, dude, go it, see Deadpool like three times. Oh, I've seen Deadpool. Deadpool was phenomenal. <laughs> Um, Ryan Reynolds absolutely killed it. Uh, so. Yeah, he did kill it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard he killed a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his name is Deadpool, so. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, you seem to know a lot about film. What would you say your top movie to recommend to the listeners is? Oh, jeez. <laughs> um... God, I'm trying to think of just some things that I've seen re- recently because I've seen a lot of stuff. Um, I, it's, I go way back with this. Uh, Star Wars has always been like one of my favorite. Ooh, like which one? Uh, which one? Yeah. Um, Episode one, right? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, totally. Oh no. Uh, Jar Jar Binks, best Star Wars character ever. <laughs> Darth Jar Jar. No. <laughs> Darth. Honestly, um, Jar Jar Binks was probably the best written character in episode one. And I know I'm going to get some flag for that, but he's the only one with a story arc. I mean, he starts out as some, like, loser who's exiled from his community, <laughs> and he ends up like a general and a junior senator. Yeah, right? I mean, that would be a fair point. Obi-Wan's And then cool he just now. disappears <laughs> after episode three. I don't know where he goes. Yeah. He's <laughs> waiting in the shadows <laughs> as Darth Jar Jar. <laughs> Just wait. He's uh, Snoke. Just for watch anyone it. who uh, doesn't know what that is, Spoilers. just Google search Darth Jar Jar. <laughs> it's a uh, quite intricate fan theory that Jar Jar Binks is the uh, supreme Sith Lord of the Star Wars universe. It'll blow your mind. <laughs> yes, the it Illuminati will. man. Um, yeah. So Star Wars is a pretty big one. Uh, I love movies with like really cool twists. So uh, like Memento is oh, yeah. like one of my favorite movies. Uh, Fight Club was also really cool. Um, I also watch uh, a lot of like anime film, uh, so like Miyazaki. Uh, you know, if anyone's seen Spirited Away, or, or that one's uh, a great one. Mm-hmm. Spirited Away yeah. is awesome. Like Princess Mononoke. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm a huge fan of those movies, as well as you know other animated films. Not necessarily anime, but like um, computer animation. So like Pixar, uh, DreamWorks, Shrek. Have you ever heard of the movie Paprika? <laughs> I've heard of Paprika. I've seen that. That's a pretty cool movie. Mm-hmm. It's uh, pretty pretty mind blowing. Yeah. Uh, and very trippy, but it is a really cool movie, and it uh, brings up a lot of interesting uh, concepts and uh, ethical provo- questions. Ethical questions yeah. about technology. Yes. Highly recommend to those who haven't seen it. Yes. Dan and I watched it the other night, right? That movie was pretty cool. Not yeah. Gonna lie. 
Yeah, so funny story. I think first time I watched that movie, I was like kind of half asleep and I was like dozing in and out of like watching the movie. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you will have no idea what's going on, but um, yeah, it was a great film. Yeah. Alex, that for sure. have any recommendations? Oh, don't ask me that question. Okay. Yeah, that, I. No. <laughs> um, I can recommend lots of things, but movies are definitely not one that I would value my opinion on. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any, like, cool hobbies that you're interested in besides music? Um, well, I, I really like to play tennis, actually. Tennis? <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't played in a while, but, yeah, I've, I love watching it. I'm total tennis geek. Um... I love playing Wii tennis. That's, that's that too. Yeah, Mario, <laughs> Mario, I love Mario Power Wii tennis. <laughs> oh, dude, that that game is awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, Mario Slugger is really good too. All right, we just, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> all things tennis. I love all of them. So that's my big secret hobby, I guess. Um, besides that, um, I like reading. <laughs> reading. What's your favorite book? Such an adventurous oh. man, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, that's um. I don't know, actually. Or how about this? What's your favorite book series? Book series. Oh, boy. Read any uh, Game of Thrones? <sighs> no. I didn't no? read Game of Thrones. I, I'm a sucker for Harry Potter, honestly. Harry Potter it is was, great. And not because of the movies, because they were genuinely good books. Yeah, they, they were. were. Books. So those those always have, I have a soft spot for those, absolutely. Yeah. Expecto Patronum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, the character is redeveloped well in those books. Yeah. Who is your favorite Harry Potter character? Ooh. Jeez. I always loved Hagrid. I don't Hagrid. know why. Yeah. Love Hagrid. <laughs> All right. Big lovable oaf. Yeah. Sirius is my favorite. <laughs> Sirius. Oh, Sirius is, yeah. Sirius is awesome. Yeah, I know everyone always says Snape, but I gotta say Snape. No, Snape is awesome. <laughs> Snape's very complex. I think I agree with you on Snape. Yeah, yeah R.I.P. 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 <laughs> Actually, like, R.I.P. to Sirius, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, not in real life, but... Dude, spoilers. <laughs> oh, you right. haven't read the books yet. <laughs> well, I mean... Yeah. I mean, it's been out for, like, 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the movie's been out for a while as well. Somebody... There was this one girl... I, I literally, like, spoiled, like, the ending of Star Wars Episode Six. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, and I'm just no. like... Uh, no, it wasn't even, like, the new one that just came out, Episode Seven. It was, like, the movie that came out in, like, 1982. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like, it's not your fault. Yeah, man. it's like, come on. <laughs> but yeah yeah awesome so I'm gonna ask you the favorite band question favorite band yeah <laughs> you go it, first Mike I got um honestly favorite band kind of depends on the day and what mood I'm feeling in Bingo. or the genre um yeah, yeah. favorite um, rock band yeah favorite rock band um I go way back with Incubus. Uh, I I love their music. Every album is just has a different sound, and uh, they've evolved just so, like incredibly, uh, strangely at times. But um, I just love their music. And uh, as a guitarist, I think uh, the guitarist Mike Einziger uh, um, is really awesome as well, and he has just such a inter uh, interesting part of the band. So I don't know. Yeah. I kind of have, um, I guess, a top three at the moment. Um, and this changes quite regularly, but number one is usually Alter Bridge. Um, as we mentioned before, that's a big influence on the whole band. Um, but just the way Miles sings is just like butter. It's so good. Um, especially, he also, yeah, <laughs> he also does some stuff with Slash from Guns N' Roses, and mm -hmm. that stuff is equally ridiculous. So... Um, yeah, they're my number one. And then two and three at the moment, and this fluctuates on a daily or weekly basis, but right now I'm really into Adelita's Way um, with Rick he De Jesus. If you haven't listened to them, watch a video on YouTube because he goes ballistic and flips the microphone around and stuff. It's very fun to watch. And then also in Seven Dust.
Awesome. That is the sound of the emergency broadcast testing. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're going down. Yeah. <laughs> it's voicing its discontent. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So I'm watching a video of a super long domino effect Jaeger bomb drop <laughs> on, <laughs> on Facebook. Oh, I think I've seen that before. Is it the one where it's kind of like a, a I don't know how to describe it, but like a really long like island bar and it yeah, like goes around. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I've it's like that. on a cruise ship. I'm like, why? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's unreal. Ooh, don't rock the boat too <laughs> Sorry. much. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I know uh, that was totally random, but I, just, <laughs> I thought I'd share that with you guys because I found it amusing. I always like wonder how people have time for that, but I think if I figured in all the time I spend like loafing around doing absolutely nothing, <laughs> I, I can understand. Dude, count the hours that you've been playing Pokemon on your oh, computer. Yeah. I've been playing a lot of Pokemon <laughs> lately. <laughs> Classic game. Uh, yeah. Oh, we could ask, what's your favorite Pokemon? Oh, man, it's been <laughs> years. <laughs> it's been so long since I thought oh, about God. this. I don't have a good answer to this <laughs> All question. Right. I have one. I love Totodile. Totodile? I don't care what anyone <laughs> yeah, no. says. I love Not the evolved forms I either. It has to be the little Totodile. I love him. Uh, Snorlax. He's yes. <laughs> Snorlax. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> He's just... So lazy. That's valid. That's valid. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Snorlax is loafing around. The epitome of oh, the American man. spirit. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. You got like Munchlax, which is just like always eating stuff too. So I I have a funny story about Snorlax. Uh, last <laughs> last year, um, I went to PAX East in Boston. Uh, for those who don't know, PAX East is a uh, giant gaming convention. A lot of uh, devs come out to display new games, and uh, you know, fans and players come out to test them. Um, there was one person there who was doing a Snorlax cosplay, and they were literally just laying in the middle of the floor. And there was a giant group of people around them, and this dude was just laying in the floor. Some people were coming up, taking pictures with him. I think somebody actually pushed him over, and he just... You know, just went with it. <laughs> <laughs> it was was, was he a large person? Or? Uh, about medium size, I'd say. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Needed to maybe stuff a couple more pillows in there, but yeah. That's an interesting cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty cool. If you guys were to cosplay some as something or someone, who would you cosplay as? Mike, Fiction this is thing. this is all you because I don't have an answer. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I would have to say a character uh, from a older game I've played. It's on the Nint Nintendo DS. It's called 999, 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. Um, it's a um, kind of visual novel puzzle game, and it has a phenomenal story, uh, phenomenal characters, and uh, really cool um, costume design. Um, there's one character from there called Snake. Um, he kind of has my physique, but he's like a really cool uh, looking dude. Um, yeah, not a lot of people have heard of the game, but if you're interested in it, I'd definitely check it out because the story would will blow you away. My DS broke, but uh, if I ever come across one, I'll definitely give it a look. <laughs> yeah, uh, the first time I played it, I had to uh, get a, like an emulator, but... Um, I definitely, I eventually found it in stores. It's uh, kind of old and kind of hard to come across, but yeah. Nice. <laughs> it seems pretty dope. Do you guys want to hear more funny band stories? Yes, we do. Okay. <laughs> we, we have so many of those. Um, what do you want to start with, Mike? We actually took notes during the break so that we didn't forget anything. I think <sighs> we should start with our good friends from Milk. Yes. Okay, uh, we did a house show at our drummer's house, uh, Andrew Moore, in 2014, summer, and the great thing about that was not only did we get a bunch of, you know, our friends and our fans to come out to that, but we also got another band, Milk, uh, I believe their Facebook page is the original Milk Bottle, um, they're from the Yukon area, and they played at the show as well, so um, they're a great band, definitely check them out, that was really fun, and they, sound, they sounded great. Yeah. Yeah. 
But the story about that is... Yeah, he's got the story. <laughs> when we uh, created the event on, like, Facebook, uh, it was listed as Auburn Row with milk. Oh, right. Half our fans <laughs> took that as we were going to be serving milk uh, oh. at our house oh. show. So there was great confusion there, but when it eventually got cleared up, we just decided, you know what, why not? So before the show, we went out, we got some milk, we got some cookies, we set up a nice table uh, in front of the stage, and uh, people could just go up and, you know, have some milk and cookies and listen to uh, some live music. Oh, that's very nice. Are they from Austin? Are they from where? Austin. Austin? Uh, no. Oh, I'm looking on Facebook right now. I'm I'm not sure if these are the right dudes. No, it, their Facebook page is the original Milk Bottle. Oh, okay, but they go by Milk, or maybe they just went by Milk at our show. I don't know, um, but they're a great band. Definitely check them out. Sweet. Um, aren't, <laughs> well, we we could go all day here. Uh, <laughs> I I have another good one. Uh, we played at the Space in 2013 or 2014, and. Our goal was to make it as ridiculous of a show as possible because they were probably going to cut our set time based on the rules of the show, which was kind of silly. Oh. And, and they did end up doing that. So we made it the most absurd set possible, and we actually did Smells Like Teen Spirit. <laughs> um, nice. And not only did we do the song, but we all wore ridiculous hats. Oh. So I know I had a Santa hat on. Yeah, um, I, it, it was tough for me. I had to. I had longer hair at the time. I have kind of like medium length hair, but I actually put it in like two ponytails, and I had like a Viking <laughs> helmet on with like the horns. Um, I think it fell off during the show, but I still had ponytails. <laughs> and our lovely drummer put a giant wig on of, I don't even know whose wig it was. It was this giant. I don't know. Curly was, black, long hair. It was the old school Dave Grohl, man. Old school Dave oh. Grohl, and he just was like going to town back there. It was priceless. That's great. wow. Um, and then we also have, of course, the story of our debut album recording. Um, I, I guess I don't know where to start with this. Uh, we so our record is out first of all, so it does have a happy ending. But we, we recorded the record probably three or four months after we started the bands in 2012. So it was like June or July of 2012. Um, and the recording process itself only took about, a, you know, a couple weeks. Um, nothing too crazy about the timeline. We were all excited. We were like, yes, going to get this out. Um, and then we didn't really hear back from our mixer for a very long time. Um, and then it turned out we had, you know, the lead vocal change, so I had to go back in and record all of the lead vocals again anyway. Um, so, but then after that, he just kind of fell off the face of the earth and maybe 18 months later produced these horrible mixes oh. that just... I can't even begin to describe the pain <laughs> that my ears were in when I heard these mixes. Oh, um, we didn't it, even get one of the files. Yeah, yeah, walk away. Um, <laughs> it Which is thankfully on the album but we we just never got it um so then we tried to contact him and you know tell him like hey you need to fix this 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 and we sent him like a specific list and all this and he just didn't reply for many more months and we were you know furious at this point i don't remember what happened in the months that followed because i was seeing red um but <laughs> eventually we got in touch with him and we got the files back from this guy uh, the project files, and then thankfully we brought them to our other friend Ian, um, and he helped us out of a tough bind, and you know, uh, really helped us put the record together and produce what you now hear as the record. And uh, you know, it took maybe two and a half years longer than it should have, but it is out. Yeah, well, at <laughs> least it has a happy ending. Yeah, yeah. thankfully. <laughs> Time is just a concept. It's true. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. I must have had to track vocals five times, too. Oh. Just be, because then, after we got the project files, we found out that a bunch of the parts were recorded incorrectly. Oh. So I had to do it again for, like, the fourth time. <laughs> wow. But, must have been a pain. Yeah. But we will say the one great thing that did come out of those recording sessions, and Mike will 100% back me up on this, I guarantee it, and all of our other bandmates, the creation of an improvised track which is known as Be A Man. And the backstory behind this song is that 
we literally had one mic going on in the room and I started playing a four chord progression, nothing crazy, uh, on piano. And our drummer went up to the microphone and improvised this whole song and it is actually a very inspirational uh, <laughs> soliloquy. Like very uplifting. Whoa. <laughs> and I think that's somewhere online. People can find that. If not, I will go put it on the internet after this <laughs> because it's truly um, the, indescribable. It's just the amazing thing is that you guys just completely improvised that. <laughs> wow. I cannot believe it to this day. <laughs> it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, it's great when a band is able to come together and combine efforts on the spot to make something cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely comedic in nature. Yeah. And we've done it live a few times, and I'm pretty sure it's been, if not the most well-received we've ever been, very close, because it is so <laughs> absurd that everyone just loves it. I love it, too. I hope we do it again. Absolutely, and it gets uh, our drummer Andrew uh, out in front center stage. Uh, <laughs> Andrew, if you are listening preaching to, to the this, audience, <laughs> we got to do it again, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's on now. <laughs> Improv parts are great. My friend is, or he was in a band, and uh, he also worked at. He ripped tickets basically at a concert venue, and something he would say to everyone whose ticket he ripped was cash bar only no re-entry and he some he one day he decided to turn that into a song and so he basically started singing cash bar only no re-entry and those were the lyrics the song turned out pretty well wait are you talking about Stu? no i'm talking about dick scott and the oh really show. yeah they broke up uh about a month ago do we need but, more dudes yeah no they have a bunch of great songs that band had a lot of talent unfortunately Whenever they recorded, they'd get way too drunk, and <laughs> the recordings would sound, you know, they'd go down the list of the tracks in the album, and the first few tracks they recorded sounded all right, but by the time they were at the bottom of the album, in the bottom of the bottle, it uh, sounded pretty terrible. I mean, I thought Vodka University sounded pretty great. That was the last song on the album, <laughs> oh and there were gosh. several <laughs> instrumentation mistakes. <maybe. laughs> We can't we can't play any of their songs before 10 p.m. Unfortunately, due to the FCC laws. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. Man. Yeah. I'm gonna download. The, I. Um, I'm actually hosting like a, a show this weekend, and I was originally supposed to have like them play like the Prude show, yeah. and unfortunately they broke up. But wow, it's yeah, kind of a bummer. That's a bummer. But yeah. Yeah. it is a bummer. They're they're a Westfield band. Uh, mate mainly and a bunch of the members were actually members of this radio station so they had a lot of support from radi the local radio station and uh you know they both they both worked at two of the members worked at a venue so they probably could use that as a way to you know promote their name so it's kind of sad that they broke up but you know what happens. Was uh, Eric Wiesel part of that group? He was not. No, it was Sam it's Doe, Rich Scott, and Dan Sardica. Oh, it was a trio. Yeah, it was. They had a uh, weird instrumentation. They had a trumpeter. Oh, cool. And which was cool, but on some songs, there's really no part for a trumpet. Right. <laughs> and the trumpeter <laughs> would try and insert a part there where there really wasn't. Gotcha. And that was one of the reasons why the band fell apart. Was I'm, because of that. I'm looking at their band camp right now. They have some pretty interesting um, covers. Yeah, their album. For their albums. Uh, <laughs> Hitting the <laughs> hammer. Yeah. yeah. But that's pretty actually hilarious. But yeah, all their good for them. All their album artwork <laughs> was made by members of the band. Unfortunately, uh, none of the members of the band have very good artistic talent. Yeah. So <laughs> some stick figures. Uh, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I mean, more dudes is... Yeah, they had some jams, cast. though. They, had some, they could really get a crowd going. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, def definitely a legendary band. Oh, yeah. For the local scene. So, uh, guys, what would you say is your favorite song that you've recorded? <sighs> um, I think we're both thinking the same thing, probably. Are you thinking... My Darkest Hour. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a fun song that we like to play live. Um, it's definitely on the longer side, but it's pretty much the epitome of uh, 
Alex and I collaboration, and uh, you know even Andrew, he, you know added uh, his drumming parts in there. But um, yeah, it's uh, just like a really fun song to play live. Um, you know, it's got both its heavy parts and it's got its softer parts. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, the thing that I really like about it is how, you know, I think it was the last song that we wrote for the album. Might have been, yeah. And we were trying to go at it, you know, with the the, the typical, I don't want to call it the typical, but the, the typical mainstream rock approach where you have a verse, you have a chorus, you you have another verse, you repeat the chorus, you have a bridge, and then you, you know, chorus, outro, maybe a solo in there somewhere. Um, and a lot of our songs, like most rock bands, you know, kind of follow that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but we really wanted to try and push ourselves musically and see where we could uh, end up. And we ended up going somewhere completely unexpected. Hmm. Um, and I think it really paid off. And we're going to top it when we write tomorrow and this weekend, just saying. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's definitely a fun one to play live. And, and Jared adds a lot to that, too. Um, oh, live, yeah, definitely. Yeah, That's one that I, th I feel like we need to get a live recording of, because he's taken a couple of the, the lead parts and really... Um, made it a very nice contrast with mm -hmm. my voice and it's it's really fun just to you know see the crowd the best thing about that song actually is when there's this heavy bridge breakdown and it makes you feel like it's about to just go like <laughs> completely mental and then we just stop <laughs> wow <laughs> and and we bring out a, a we'll probably piano. disappoint some uh yeah, leave some, some well, audience yeah, members there was one time we, okay. we played it at toads once and the crowd was just like no! <laughs> no! But then they saw what we were doing, and it starts with the piano, and then we had the clean guitars, and then there's this nice little breakdown section. Mike rips a solo, and it just starts building in intensity, and we get it back to the chorus somehow. Just this gigantic build, and then people, you know, get to go crazy at the end because we bring <laughs> the bridge riff back anyway. But, yeah, I really we love the song. We could talk about it for hours. Um, but we are going to top it. Nice. So... <laughs> <laughs> you already got some uh, some thoughts flowing up. We have a, we have a spreadsheet actually. Um, really? Yeah, we have a, an organized spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. um, so the whole th concept about what we want to do for album two is because most of the record, the first one was written by myself and Mike. Uh, we want to keep that, but we also want to incorporate Andrew in the songwriting process directly, rather than just saying, "Here's a song we wrote. Add your part to it." And Jared as well, because he wasn't even you know a part of that process in, in the first album so it's going to be different and I think it's going to sound a lot more cohesive um, as a finished product as well and I'm, I'm really yeah, excited yeah definitely I think uh, what our approach this second album is going to be uh, definitely like solidifying our sound um, I mean on top of you know having the addition of Jared uh, into the mixes um, I know you have uh, some new fun toys like your <laughs> micro Korg um, <laughs> yes I love gonna, the micro chord. Yeah, so uh, we definitely have kind of more electronic kind of synth stuff uh, we're going to be layering in there. Um, I have some new toys, I call them, uh, like some new pedals and effects. Um, I always love experimenting with them and see what new cool sounds I can get out of them. Um, but just experimenting with that respect, uh, in addition to further pushing our songwriting abilities and uh, our performance as a band. Yeah. yeah, that's so important to make sure you guys have like a new sound so you can keep bringing out new stuff. For yeah, absolutely. Listeners. I think the um, the track that we're considering right now, is the, the front runner, I'll call it, as the lead single. Is it has the potential to be the most ironic radio hit of all time, <laughs> um, because it it has a rock influence, no doubt. But it's called Brand New Dawn, and we've played it live once um, back in 2015. So the guys yeah. have all heard it, and you know we've started kind of messing with the parts a little bit. But I have a demo that's just a lot of synth, and the lyrics are all about um, you know kind of that idea of society being sheepish and. One of the lyrics <laughs> that I think is priceless is um, it's about the radio and how people really like to synthesize their voice and make it synthetic. Mm -hmm. We'll call it um, uh -huh. that. 
they use lots of auto tune and production, and then they can't, you know, replicate it live. Yeah. And the lyric is, "Where talent is fabricated by auto tune, and we are going to auto tune the crap out of the word <laughs> auto tune." There are so many things that I could say about that song, but I'll we'll wait until it's actually <laughs> recorded. That's a cool spin. <laughs> it's going to be interesting, but it might not no, be the single. At the end of the day, we might have something better. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll see. So, have you guys made any music videos? Uh, we have not yet. Um, I think the plan for the future is possibly getting a music video for something like Brand New Dawn, or um, if we somehow feel another song would be uh, would make a stronger music video. But uh, mm -hmm. we definitely, for this next album, we want a music video for one of our songs. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That'd be really fun. <laughs> cool. So what do you guys think about the local Connecticut music scene when you were growing up? How did that sort of shape you? Did you go to a lot of shows? I have a long answer for this, so go ahead, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I got I to gotta condense my thoughts about this. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, local music scene, um, mostly growing up, I guess I went to a lot of shows, um, not too many of them were, um, for local music, local bands, uh, I started, I'm trying to do that more recently, uh, it's always good to go out and see new bands, uh, you know, even if you don't like them or something, I think it's, uh, as a performer, I see it as important to kind of watch other people and see maybe things you like that they're doing or things you don't like um, and just support local music. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, just growing up, like, local music wasn't, like, the biggest part of my life, but um, I definitely saw some kind of bigger shows, I guess, during those days. Uh, recently, I'm just trying to get out there more. Uh, I know you... You said you have a longer answer to this, Alex. Um, well, no, it's kind of similar, actually. Uh, you know, I, I, too, didn't really focus on the local music scene too much. I really focused on the big names. Uh, and when I was growing up, my, both of my parents are actually classical musicians. So um, I've, I've had that ingrained in me for since I, I was like two or three. I, I started playing piano when I was four, classical. So... Um, you know, I, I've always kind of gone and seen symphonies, like my mom plays in a symphony, so I went to see her and um, stuff like that. Um, but then as I got older, you know, I started to check out other types of music, like rock was my first real passion that was specifically me, and uh, I started to go see bands like uh, Alter Bridge, I've seen Shinedown, <laughs> Stained a couple times, Adelie This Way, a whole bunch of bands, um, and that was kind of through high school. And then when I went to Temple, uh, you know, the local scene really actually spoke to me a bit more because I was actually a part of it, um, you know, playing in jazz clubs and stuff like that. Um, so it's been more of an influence on me later in life than earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of Connecticut specifically, I know that we've played a bunch of shows and it's, we've had a couple good experiences like Toads, but for the most part, uh, here and there, we've had a couple shows that were kind of like we sounded fine and the band you know did a fantastic job but just the vibe was kind of off and yeah. off-putting so um yeah that's why we're kind of looking for this summer not only just at connecticut but for massachusetts pennsylvania new jersey we're trying to you know reach out to areas surrounding connecticut as well because we've had a, a bit of a more positive experience in those regions that's good yeah so, yeah. uh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Say? Oh, okay. Sorry to interject, but, um, New Haven. What is your favorite part about New Haven besides Toad's Place? Because <laughs> I uh, love New Haven. It's really nice. I like New Haven. It's pretty sweet. I like around the, I haven't ventured too far out, um, of like the Toad's Place area because I think Yale is like right next to it. So. I don't know. I don't have much experience down in New Haven. Uh, some it's parts. A nice. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say some parts seem l like really nice. Some others not so much. But yeah. <laughs> um, well, the the symphony my mom plays in, since you know it's related, it's the New Haven Symphony Orchestra. So, 
Um, and I actually went to neighborhood music school in New Haven for many years. So uh, New Haven has always been a big part of my life. And growing up, I, I would, uh, you know, try to go and see any shows that I could, uh, usually orchestra, but I saw a couple jazz gigs here and there when, you know, I could figure out when they were happening. Uh, so I, I love New Haven, and it's probably one of the areas of Connecticut that I, I really greatly can say that I enjoy. Um, generally, not a big fan anymore. <laughs> no? <laughs> nah, no. Once, you, once you've been in an area, like, for me, Philadelphia really spoke to me. Um, and once you're submersed in that area for a long period of time, it's tough to, like, go back and relocate the positives, you know. Mm -hmm. But my parents are in Connecticut, and, you know, Mike and I met in Connecticut, so it's not like, you know, I hate Connecticut or anything. <laughs> yeah. It's not like that, but it's just, you know. Do you plan on living in Philly for the rest of your life? Oh, uh, I guess it, de <laughs> it depends on a couple things. Um, true, true. Yeah, uh... Probably not, if I'm being realistic. Um, and there's a lot of factors involved in that that I, I could talk all day about that. Um, probably shouldn't on the radio. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I love Philly, and I felt at home there for the past five years. Um, at some point, I think it will be good to get a change of perspective. Um, now, whether that's a year down the road or if it's, you know, longer than that, I don't know yet. Um, I'm at Drexel right now, actually. So, cool. uh, yeah, that program's done in December of 2016, and after that, I have to figure some stuff out. But in terms of the rest of my life, it depends on way too many things for me to actually calculate right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Word. So true. Word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the local music scene, as far as Westfield goes, it's pretty much non-existent, but the whole, like, cultural center Sorry. of this area is probably Northampton or Amherst. Dude, Northampton is awesome. Yeah, I work in Northampton. Uh, I've grown to despise, like, the type of person who... Like the Northamptonite, the quote unquote hipster, the North, <laughs> North the Northamptonian. I don't know. Some some of the people there are just off putting, but there's a lot of really cool people and really cool bands out of Northampton. And of For course, sure. you got Amherst, which is sort of like spillover from UMass Amherst, which has a pretty cool house music scene, like a few like house parties and bands that play in basements. That's basically a rundown of the Pioneer Valley for you. Yeah. What are your guys' thoughts on Springfield? Uh, it's not I wouldn't go there if I had to. <laughs> 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 it's not that nice a place. I'm yeah, okay. I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry. That was such a loaded question. <laughs> hey, I, I, one of my very best friends goes to Springfield College, so that's why I was curious. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sure like Springfield College itself is nice, but... Uh, I I've only I been there to... once, so I don't know. But I was just curious. It just like <laughs> it just I don't know. It just doesn't make me feel safe being in Springfield. I've met some cool people from Springfield, though. Me too. Which is cool. One time, a I lot got, of people from here go to or er, live in Springfield. Yeah, a lot of people commute from Springfield. But one time, I got lost in Springfield in like the inner city part, and it was like 4:30 on a Sunday, and I was very close to missing the last bus back to Westfield, which would have been a bummer. So, nice. fortunately, I was able to get directions from a very nice man, and I found the bus. But I was, nice get, I was getting scared Close because call. the sun was starting to go down. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm, found your way home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with that area, but if it's anything like North Philadelphia where, you know, I lived for <laughs> far too long, um, <laughs> I can only imagine... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been to Pennsylvania once. I went to Hershey Park. Oh and yeah, man! If you're too. gonna it visit Pennsylvania, that's where you go. It Seriously. was very fun. Yeah, <laughs> some good roller coasters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys uh, ever been? I've never been to Hershey. Park. I haven't been to Hershey Park actually. I have no excuse. But yeah. you, yeah, you live in Philly, I have man. Absolutely no excuse. I'm <laughs> well yeah, you aware. Should probably of that. go. <laughs> I'm going to have to go, like... Band road trip. <laughs> you hear that, Andrew and Jared? We're going to Hershey. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Not negotiable. Like <laughs> <laughs> Super fun. 
I've also been to Gettysburg. That was cool. Me too. Man. A place is sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of sad, but... Yeah, oh, it's very sad. It's cool, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever been to Philadelphia, though, which is unfortunate. Come hang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you live in Philly? Uh, right now, I live in West Philly, which is right next to Drexel, basically. Just, cool. you know, because it's an easy commute, um, mm-hmm. which is way better than... I, I was living in, like, very, very bad territory in North Philly where um, I guess the the way I put this tactically is it wasn't uncommon on a weekly basis for us to get little T alerts as they called them that said oh someone's been shot at a street that's like two blocks away from you oh. and we got so desensitized to it that we were like oh okay but really that's not normal <laughs> like, yeah that shouldn't be normal that's kind of scary but it's getting better it's definitely getting better um, that's good but yeah just happy to be in a better area yeah for sure yeah yeah i feel like it's weird like most big cities will have a college in it and like a college community like worcester has wpi obviously and holy cross right is that in worcester yeah the worcester has a whole bunch of colleges like wpi holy cross assumption uh worcester stecker yeah yeah, and they usually have, like, a, maybe a neighborhood where college kids live, but Springfield, I feel like, doesn't really have that as much. Mm-hmm. There's not really a ton of schools there other than Stick, which is a technical institute, and Springfield College. But I could be completely wrong about that. Yeah? I have no idea. Yeah, I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> I've, I've only been to Springfield once, I think, so. Hmm. Same. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think that going to school in the city is definitely, like, it's something that I could definitely see myself doing, but I also really like being close to a park. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but driving in, but there's a park right across the street. Yeah. Which is yeah pretty awesome. I was there today. Nice. Yeah, dude, yeah I went longboarding there. there. Dude, it was beautiful. Yeah. There's some grumpy old man who's like, you better not skateboard on the new pavement. I'm like, that's exactly where I'm going. <laughs> You're like, oh man, new pavement, let's go. <laughs> no, like, that's like a thing, dude. That's like the best place to go. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like carving butter, but like, on your board. <laughs> That might be my favorite analogy of the week. Yeah. <laughs> or month. <laughs> I don't know if you carve butter. That probably wasn't the best way to... I got what you're saying, though. You know, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I've seen some butter carvings, or maybe it was <laughs> cheese or something. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can carve a turkey, See, but that's that's not as smooth as... Well, <laughs> I was trying to portray with my uh, my words. I was thinking of some nice like sculptures and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so nice, like, gotta keep it cold though. So uh, I don't know if I already asked this, but where's the rest of the band tonight? Well, <laughs> uh, Andrew's at a show in Rhode Island. Uh, he's probably gonna kill me that I forgot what he's going to see, but. He's yeah. going to see some show that uh, he's had this booked for like quite a while, so he couldn't make it out. Um, and I think Jared had a prior engagement too. I've, I've yeah, what, but cool. Yeah, we miss them <laughs> dearly. <laughs> it's been a while. It has. You'll see them soon. We cool. will quite will. soon. Yep. very soon. Yeah, we got plans. Well, tentative plans soon. for shenanigans. Absolutely. Oh, what yeah. is uh? You're, oh, I know this is probably a spoiler alert, but do you have an idea of what you're going to call your new album? I don't think we do, to no. be honest. No. No. Yeah, we're, we, not, we're not sure yet. We have this whole spreadsheet of, you know, songs, and I would say maybe three or four have definitive titles, and the rest have these little quotation marks around them because either they don't have lyrics or we're not sure what to call them. And the record might not even be one of those songs as the title. It might just be a completely separate thing that we think oh, fits. That's cool. Um, so to be determined cool yeah and I think like you know we're, we're gonna spend some time this weekend obviously writing some stuff but um, we have some you know strong instrumental demos but I think a lot of the lyrics are still mostly unwritten so yeah I'm, we're not too sure what uh, lyrical theme we're going to go for but definitely some thought-provoking stuff awesome yeah. so have you guys ever considered 
doing a self-titled album? I mean, we've never really thought about it, probably. Um, with with The World Outside, the reason we called it that was um, it just kind of... It, the track, The World Outside itself, kind of was a good representation of the album as a whole, and it kind of helped that it was the closer, too. And it's just a cool-sounding title. Yeah. Um, so that's why we went with that. As for a self-titled, I mean, it's a possibility. I, I it is know. a possibility. I mean, we, we talked about it before, but I don't think either of us really know what Auburn Row means. I've had yeah. my musings, I guess, of what it could mean, but I feel like it's a ominous enough title that it could be work as an album title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... Yeah, yeah I, uh, I'm not in a band, but I feel like n- naming your album after your band is kind of like you're losing out on an opportunity to have a cool name that draws people in. But you also, the one benefit I could see of it is like you get more repetition with your band name so people will recognize you more. That's very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, personally, I've kind of felt the same. Uh, I haven't always been, like, the biggest fan of, like, self-titled albums. Uh, And, like, what you said, but also the fact that, um, you know, it's a new album, it's new work, uh, maybe a new lyrical theme or, uh, you know, theme to the album. And I feel like not all the time your, you know, band name for the title of the album doesn't necessarily work for the message you're trying to convey through the album you put out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Are there any hot new releases uh, by other groups that you guys are currently enamored with or listening to? Oh. Hmm. You know what? Uh, I don't know if this is a well-known band, but Blackstone Cherry uh, just came out with a new record. I think it's their fifth album. I wasn't a fan of their mm-hmm. third and fourth, but I just checked that one out really quick and... Uh, really enjoyed that they kind of went back to their old southern rock Mm -hmm. sound um so that one i've been listening to and also this record uh i think it's the kenny baron trio to go down the jazz route it's just a great nice straightforward uh trio record which was refreshing so nice those are my two so alex you're a jazz musician would you say you're a jazz musician first or a rock musician first or both? <laughs> um, you know what the simple answer is? I now consider myself just a musician. Um, if you had asked me that question a year or two ago, I would have said, oh, I'm a jazz musician, mm-hmm. but I play rock. Um, if you asked me that five or six years ago, I would have said, I really, I, I feel like a rock musician, but I also like jazz. So it's kind of when it's gone back and forth over the years. But uh, now I, I don't like defining myself to a genre um, because when I write music, there's kind of little influences... Um, regardless of which project it's for, from all different genres. Um, mm-hmm. I have a, a record coming out, not to you know, do a total self-plug here, but um, the record is probably going to be called For What May Never Come, and it's a uh, jazz record. But there's a couple tracks on there that definitely have rock influences. Um, and then vice versa, a, lot, a, a couple of the ideas for Auburn Row have had some jazzy influences in them as well but not enough to make it like that's a jazz song um so i really like combining those things and i don't like to confine myself to you know boxes personally true speaking of genres uh i know you guys are a rock band like a harder rock sound but how would you define yourself because i know it's very subjective when you're talking about genres and sort of mixing and stuff so how uh, my question is, how would you guys label yourselves? Um, I, I liked your answer of just labeling yourself as a musician. Um, but <laughs> um, I definitely listen to like a lot of different genres. Uh, I love listening to like old blues, so like B.B. Uh, King, Albert King, uh, even like Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, I love listening to them, love playing like along to it. Um, I also listen to uh, a lot of metal. Um, like some of my favorite bands right now, like I love Opeth. Um, just it's, uh, just a huge influence uh, in my playing. Um, I've been listening to some Gojira recently. Um, they're a like French, um, 
I forget what subgenre of metal they classify themselves, maybe like Groove or something. But um, they're some really cool guys too. Um, I listen to some like punk, punk, pop punk stuff like that. So um, I try to dabble in, you know, a little bit of everything. Um, <laughs> the only thing I can't do really well is jazz, <laughs> unfortunately. But <laughs> well, I can't really do blues, so this is why we're a good team. <laughs> yeah, we're into Bruges. <laughs> cover each other's weaknesses. <laughs> yeah. Um, in terms of the band, I don't know what you would call us. That's yeah. The, I have no idea. Um, it's so hard to define. Yeah, especially with this first album, because you have some songs like um, Forever and Always, Last Prayer, Million Lies, which kind of go on the darker, moodier side. And then you have tunes like Along the Way and A Reason to Breathe that are more incubus-driven and um, more optimistic and... Uh, give a totally different vibe off. So maybe we'll have a better answer when we've composed and recorded album two. From what I've heard of your music, it seems like it will be easier to look at the individual songs, like you were just saying, rather than try and la- label the band as a whole. I agree with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Completely. All right, so how do you... Uh, how do you guys in what ways do you think that bringing on I know you mentioned on bringing on a few new members lately how do you think those guys have contributed uh, to the band musically like instrumentally and through ideas oh gosh it's night and day yeah um, well, like, I, like I said before um, a lot of these songs we just had these MIDI demos and like mm-hmm. Originally, Andrew was, you know, from the the beginning of the process, and he just, you know, he listened to the drum parts we programmed, and maybe he kept a couple things that he liked here and there, but he definitely did his own thing. Um, and on, it's only evolved live. He's, you know, tested out new things that he's liked, and that's why I'm really excited for album two because we're just basically gonna do something similar, but he's gonna just take it to another level every single time. That's great. Um, yeah. And Jared, too. Yeah, having yeah. Jared on the next album is probably going to be the new big thing. Because, I mean, I'm, you know, Andrew's going to bring it, I know. But oh, yeah. he was on the first album as well. Jared, you know, wasn't on the first album, unfortunately. So uh, we're excited to have him on the next one. But I know we're definitely writing some layered gu- guitar parts and uh, some different, like, backing vocal parts for him to yeah. blend in his voice. And we will make sure that Andrew's drums are recorded properly so that you can yeah. actually hear him in the mixes. <laughs> Not put the mic so close? Or Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we said this on air. We were talking about it, but one of the things that happened was um, the overhead mics were probably maybe a couple centimeters from the cymbals hmm. when we recorded in a garage, no less. Um, I, think, so I think the typical is usually like feet. at least feet. Well, inches. oh, the overhead mics Overheads. will be a couple of feet, yeah. Uh, I think, like, for the snare mic, he had it, like, almost touching yeah. the head of the snare. I think usually for that is maybe, like, two inches or something. Yeah. yeah. So they did not come out very well on the recordings. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. We will fix that. Right, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys were talking earlier about how you got some new toys in terms of like pedals and such. <laughs> How do you think those are going to affect your sound on this new album? I, I think it's gonna make a make things very fun uh, mm. for everyone. That rhymed. That was cool. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I know. Personally speaking, I just recently got this micro cord about a year ago, um, and I, I've used it live with Auburn Row once and. You know, they indulged me, thankfully, and let me have a tune where Jared played bass and I got to do a little solo on the micro and I, I enjoyed myself thoroughly. Um, and it's just really fun and it's different than a keyboard. I can actually pitch bend notes and the sounds are a little different and uh, that'll definitely play a part for sure. But that's my only new toy. I know you have several. Um, I think my biggest uh, new toy is I got an uh, Eventide... Uh, harmonizer pedal. Uh, I think it's called the Pitch Factor. 
Um, and I know on the first album we have a lot of songs that have these kind of uh, layered guitar parts that have like different harmonies on them. And uh, it was something that was kind of missing from our live shows, um, just because, for instance, like we needed some like rhythm playing in the background, like some chords. Um, Jared had that handled, but there was still like more layers we needed. Um, so with this new pedal, I can essentially create those harmonies on my guitar parts. Um, it's like very similar to what you'll hear like in a like Boston solo or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Uh, it has some other cool effects on it too uh, that I'm excited to try out. So that's like the biggest new toy. Um, I'm also on the lookout for a tremolo pedal, which has a kind of um, echoey kind of effect. Um, but I guess the best example I could probably give of the tremolo effect is the beginning of Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. Oh, yeah. So um, we have a couple of uh, instrumental ideas that revolve around that. So that's going to be really cool. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's a great song, by the way. It is. Yeah. That whole album is great. Yeah. So I just looked at my phone and I have over 100 text messages. Are um, you serious? Can I, can I give some shout-outs? Oh, absolutely. Because <laughs> they are pestering yeah. me. Not pestering. <laughs> I love these guys. But, um, you know, it, I think this needs to be said. Eric Richter, who is one of our biggest fans, I have been friends with him since third grade, which is absurd. Um, he lives in Austin now. Yeah, Texas. listening in from Austin, Texas. So, so we got some pretty dedicated props fans. props to him. Yeah. Um, and just shout-out to him. Ian Piazic who, you know, mixed and recorded the debut album and saved us from <laughs> uh, the ultimate peril that was the initial recording process. Um, Jared, of course, our bandmate. Uh, we're sorry he couldn't be here. We'll, we'll shout out Andrew, too. I think he's at the concert, but if he is listening, Andrew. Um, my dear friend Aaron, on the off chance she is listening, um, I will see you on Saturday. And that's all I've got. Uh, I'd like to shout out to my mom and dad, too. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if they're still listening in, but um, I know they definitely caught the earlier part of the show. So I want to thank them for listening and always supporting all these years. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, bit of a controversial question. What do you guys think about how you know electronica is changing music as a whole in ways like how daft yes. punk is coming in yeah. yes this is my thesis topic i kid you not <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yes this is great I'll let you take that uh well i'll keep it brief uh, <laughs> I, I don't want i don't want to go on this like you know tirade um well i i think it's really cool honestly i i don't have a problem with it um, the, the one thing I will say I do have a problem with, and not really a problem, but it's concerning, is people are making, just for instance, robots who can, you know, play music. Um, for me, personally, I don't think you can really replicate the soul of a musician. Um, there's something in the playing, you can replicate all the parts um, perfectly, even the phrasing and, you know, that they do, but there's something really special when you see someone putting their heart and soul out there and that's something a machine can't do. Um, but in terms of general technology, I think it's pretty cool because I can use the micro cord now, and I really like that. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, because yes. I know a few years ago, <laughs> uh, Arcade Fire, of all bands, I thought they were pretty nice guys, but they made fun of Daft Punk and call and was like, oh, Daft Punk, they're not real musicians because they don't play instruments. They just mix and do loops. Man, everyone has their own thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, in, a, in one way, I kind of get that. But at the same time, everyone creates music in their own way. And there mm -hmm. shouldn't be a restriction, in my opinion, on how you do that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean. Um, why limit creativity? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, there's so many <clears throat> cool uh new technologies that you can use to create music and I uh, I don't know what Daft Punk uses but even just uh, you know 
people like DJs at live shows and stuff. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of it personally, but I definitely respect it. And uh, um, to be able to like create music on the fly like that, I think it's really cool. Yeah, I feel like this has been a recurring issue throughout music history. Like even if you look at like the 70s, you had and before the 70s in jazz you had like jazz fusion coming along and smooth jazz and a lot of the older jazz musicians were saying oh this isn't real jazz music they're not really like virtuosos and are good at playing their instruments so there's definitely always been controversy over yeah. that mm -hmm. for sure it's a changing industry yeah definitely. especially in today's society where you've got technology like being shoved down our throats mm -hmm. all the time, <laughs> yeah. to, for lack of a better term. Um, I think it's something that you, we're going to have to get used to mm -hmm. one way or another, but I don't think it's a bad thing, necessarily. Awesome. We are fast, quickly approaching 10 p.m., which is the end of our block. But uh, the start of mine. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Do you guys have any remarks you'd like to make? About Auburn Row. Uh, I'll plug the album again really quick. Awesome. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, World Outside, Auburn Row. Uh, you can find it on Bandcamp, Spotify, iTunes, um, Amazon MP3, all types of digital media. Um, we will be starting to announce shows, hopefully with, uh, within the next few months, regarding our summer and fall plans. I'm very excited. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having us. And everyone, you're listening to WSKB Westfield 89.5 FM.